Greetings, unsettled souls. Sam I beat the Angie during political commentary for the media speaks, and it is time once again for the Dunce Cap of the Month award show. I do want to go ahead and give people some time to trickle in here. And uh, while I'm doing so, I guess I should do this at the start of the show instead of the end. Uh, you can donate to what I do to help me um, with uh, articles, uh, videos. It takes a lot of time to research for these, by the way. Um, mailing out dunce caps, which you are about to see one of later. Um, doing articles. I don't know if you guys know I write for Wits News and uh, Blasting News on a freelance basis. I just did an article and an interview with um, Bang Tango and Fast to Pussycat. It's on Blasting News. Uh, you can't see the autograph. It's up too high, but it's on the wall. And all right, hopefully everybody has trickled in. Once again, if you want to donate, it is the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. Greatly appreciated for those of you that do it. And for those of you that are just tuning in, uh, it's the Dunce Cap of the Month Award Show. We go through the dumbest of the dumb, the stupidest of the stupid. And at the end of it, somebody gets a Dunce Cap mailed to them along with a certificate that, uh, well, you guys will get to see it. It's not printed yet, so I don't know if you guys down there will get to see it. But I'm probably on screen share for TMS. All right, guys. They get dumber as we go. So... If you're going to skip ahead, and I don't suggest doing so, you're not going to want to miss the end. However, we are loaded with stupidity here, so you're not going to want to zone out at all, I promise. All right, friends, uh, this one was a Prison Planet, Paul Joseph Watson, PJ Dub, knitting website, bans expressions of support for Donald Trump to be more inclusive. Now, when did it become not inclusive to support the President of the United States of America. That in and of itself gives you, every story I'm doing is not political, by the way, but this one is. How stupid would you have to be, not to mention that a knitting site is very likely to attract 50-50 on the political spectrum here. The country is just about 50-50 on the topic of uh, the whole false paradigm left versus right issue. Um, this is going to be devastating to them. And this is one of the reasons they're getting the Dunce Cap of the Month award show. A knitting website with more than 8 million members, probably now 4 million, has banned users from expressing support for President Donald Trump in order to be more inclusive. Now, another reason that this is particularly stupid is that this isn't something that can just be replaced. For instance, let's say that a large number of Trump supporters quit buying Nike. A few more Pocahontas supporters can go ahead and buy Nike. So it'll even out. That's not the case here. There are only so many knitters, and if you make enough of them mad, it doesn't matter if the social justice warriors support you or not. If they don't knit, I promise you, I, I can almost swear on a stack of Bibles, almost, that they're not going to come there very frequently if they don't knit. Therefore, common sense would imply that rather than your SJW chant inclusive, it might be a good idea to really be inclusive and not get yourself on the Dunce Cap of the Month show. Because what could be more inclusive than not including potentially millions of people, asks PJ Dub. Administrators for Raverly said they were making an expression of support for Trump and his administration in forum posts, patterns for their personal file pages or elsewhere are permanently off limits in order to combat white supremacy. Now, what's even funnier here is that Donald Trump is not a white supremacist. He never has been. This knitting company, I'm telling you, I'm glad they're not, you know, a 911 dispatch center or something because we'd all be in trouble. 
Users who express support for Trump may not only have their posts removed, but could be banned permanently. You can't even have support for Trump on your own page. Such are the knitters of the world. The tweet received over 50,000 likes and an onslaught of media attention, proving once again how lame virtual signaling is the easiest way to acquire free advertising. That's still not going to help them if the people that they're pandering to don't knit. I mean, you can go the other way. I really have enjoyed most of what Donald Trump has done during his presidency. Yes, I've gone a hundred times over the things I don't agree with. But even if the site was to say, we're welcoming Trump supporters with long hair who write articles on Faster Pussycat. I don't knit. So the pandering probably isn't going to help you because I'm not going to a knitting site if I don't knit. So there you go. Um, that gets us started. They get worse. Trust me, as we go, they get dumber. I, how could you get dumber? Well, how about this? Turkey desperate for scuba tourism dumps an Airbus 330 into the middle of the ocean. Now, I don't really care, but it seems a bit strange to me by and large here that rather than tell people, you know, in the movies, they go through wreckage, but maybe there's just really not a bunch of wreckage at the bottom of the ocean. Some people choose to make things that look like wreckage. No, they went for the, the whole enchilada here. This is from Zero Hedge. Maybe we just don't understand the scuba diving community quite as well as the country of Tweaky does. Because to us, dropping an Airbus A30 commercial airliner into the middle of the ocean in northwest Turkey as a way to boost scuba diving tourism and create an artificial reef doesn't seem to make any immediate sense. But nonetheless, that is exactly what happened. The plane was scuttled a mile away from the Abrisi port of, I think it's Erdogan province at a ceremony which was attended by Al Assal, a deputy governor, among others, according to the AA. He said scuba diving tourism has a different market segment than mass tourism. He stated that an ordinary tourist generates income that ranges from five to six hundred dollars, while a tourist coming for scuba diving generates two thousand to three thousand. Now see he's smart. He's not gonna say if you support Trump, you can't come here because he knows, much like the knitting community, there are only a certain number of people about to spend this kind of money. He continued, for this reason, I think that the scuttled plane and artificial reef are very important. So the plane is about 98 feet under the sea surface and uh, was retired last year. In addition to the plane, uh, they, various other objects are down there. So it seems to me there was an easier way to accomplish this, but you know, who am I to say? Um, big League Politics. Uh, this one made me sick. Ben Shapiro launders fake news smear of Alex Jones as child porn trafficker. Now, most of the dreadful things that Ben Shapiro said was going to happen when Donald Trump came to office has not. As a matter of fact, um, Donald Trump has been quite possibly one of the biggest supporters of Israel that the country has ever had, which is a big a big talking point for Mr. Shapiro here. But rather than admit that he was wrong on a great number of topics, he chooses to not only always go after Trump, but to anyone who supports him, including Alex Jones. Now, many of you know I've always supported Alex Jones, but for those of you who do not, that is much different from encouraging a known lie. Now, for those of you that may not know, let me give you this in a nutshell. I know this didn't win, but it is close. Uh, Ben's going to get one yet, I can just tell. Uh, ben Shapiro, the only thing he's known for is destroying the Michael Savage show, because now we can listen to an hour of Savage and then try to avoid Ben's awful show. But the trouble with Alex Jones is he got mailed kitty porn to his website and it was never open during the trial where he is sticking up for himself 
in the other case regarding the Florida incident, investigators found that this was sent to him and they don't know the real identity of the person who did it. So Alex Jones is offering a million dollars to find the person. Most fair-minded people, even if they do not like Jones, have stuck up for him in this regard. This is the ultimate sleaze, whether or not you support his points of view or not. Then again, not Ben Shapiro. Neoconservative, aka warmonger, never Trump pundit Ben Shapiro is circulating fake news implying that Alex Jones is a child porn trafficker when he was actually the victim of a malware, malware attack. And Shapiro shared the misleading tweet from a Daily Beast writer that did not make clear that Jones was the victim of the malware attack. Now, this isn't just what Alex is saying. This is what the, peop the FBI themselves have said, that Alex Jones is not being investigated. The FBI advised counsel that its review located numerous additional images which had apparently been sent to Info, an InfoWars email address, the court document stated, according to the report in the Connecticut Post. Journalist Mike Cernovich called out the shameful dishonesty of the fake news to MSNBC host Chris Hayes, who joined Shapiro in sharing the smear against Jones on Twitter. I do hope he sues him for this. I had somebody leave a comment that said something, something kitty porn and threw a link on my, one of my Fukushima shows, I think it was. And I said, what is that? And they said, just click on it. And I said, no thanks. Well, it's, it's on the comment line. And I left it there because I don't really think it's kitty porn. But I, I left it there because... If this person is doing it in a number of other places, I don't think it's the one who did it to Jones, but if he's doing it in a number of places, I would like to be one of the people that lead to them getting caught. There are things which are cool and things which are not. And I am pretty libertarian. I really don't care what you do or say. But slander, libel, that kind of thing must go. And that's definitely included when you're insinuating that someone is sexually abusing children. Jones' legal counsel, Robert Barnes, uh, talked about the Orwellian nature of this coordinated attack, as Jones no longer has access to platforms and cannot defend himself from the defamation onslaught against him on social media. Again, this was definitely a coordinated attack. You could tell by the way the other host jumped in. And it says that uh, Shapiro has a long history of attacks towards President Trump and all of his supporters. I mentioned that at the start of this. He was also one of the people that attacked the uh, Catholic kid who ended up not doing anything wrong when he was confronting the Indian nutcase with the drum. Um, again, no, what, my, but definitely not saying all Indians are nutcases, but that one was. Um, we have nutcase white people too, so don't try that. Um, I tell you, most of my Indian friends would agree that we have nutcases all over. Interesting story since I started talking about this on accident. Um, my friend... Glenn, who is, he's Indian, he's into the, you know, the whole, the culture of it, everything about his culture. And he had mentioned that at the time that the pilgrims came to America, the Indians were slaughtering each other in mass. And he always points out the fact that if they had not been, if they had been a united people, they could have easily defeated the settlers, even with gunpowder, just by pure number. And this would have proven more true once they did get their hands on the weapons, which they inevitably would have gotten from you know, conquering the white man and um, kidnapping people to show them how it worked and so forth. I think that's interesting since we live in what is supposed to now be called the United States. It's kind of a warning, maybe that we do need to do things like not send pedophiles after people and accuse people of things that are not true, I should say. The smoking gun. Man tried to steal cars from the jail parking lot. Now, this is another one where... <coughs> if I knew where this gentleman lived, he would definitely get a dunce cap. Without a doubt, without reservation, I'm pretty sure that he would have won that. I'm going to see if I can go to screen share for my friends here on the Media Speaks because that's one of the reasons people subscribe there. All right. You 
it's a beautiful piece. So look at this. Minutes after being released from custody, a Florida man sought to steal numerous vehicles in a parking lot because he needed wheels to use for transportation, according to a criminal complaint. There's a link to it in the Smoking Gun article. Dennis Labanati, 68, he, he definitely looks like uh, he's had a hard life. His eyes have that wild street look to them. Not necessarily dangerous, just dull. Um, he was freed Monday evening from the jail in Lando Lakes after sentencing earlier in the day for battery. So I guess he is at least uh, more, more harmful than he looks. Uh, Labanetti pleaded guilty to the misdemeanor charge and was sentenced to 265 days of probation and ordered to attend an anger management class. Labanetti has been locked up since his arrest in mid-March. The court complaint, it said, refers to the jail as the LOL detention center. Now is a horrible time to call, so you will get sent away. Oh, many apologies. According to police, upon Lebanetti's release around 10.30 p.m., he entered a restricted area of the jail parking lot and attempted to enter 26 vehicles, all of which were locked. Now, see, I had my car stolen, and it's completely destroyed my whole life, so this guy's not real high on my sympathy list right now. Surveillance cameras recorded Lebanetti accessing the bed of a pickup truck used by the sheriff's office. So can you not read? And he was also spotted to spend, spending several minutes at a Kawasaki mural ATV used by, yep, deputies. When cops confronted the 1180 in the parking lot, he reportedly confessed to attempting entry into the vehicles with the intent to steal one to use for transportation. He admitted it. I'm trying to steal a car to get home now that I'm out of jail. He, uh, just a dust cap of the month award show, I told you. He also admitted trying to hotwire the ATV cops say. Lebanetti, who is listed in court, is listed in court records as being retired and living in Hamasasa of Flo on Florida's Gulf Coast. Nice place was charged with 27 auto burglary counts, actually at least be attempted, but fair enough, and a single grand larceny rap. He is also facing probation violation counts, uh, a probation violation count. Uh, Libanini will be returned on early yesterday to the LRL detention facility, since he was. All right, does it get dumber? We got three left. And they get dumber and dumber. Remember, you can donate at the correct views at uh, hotmail.com through PayPal. Breitbart Climate Emergency. Ireland sent to ban private cars while planning mass third world migration. Now, it, it's it's no secret that life has been quite stressful for me the, the last couple of years. Um miserably so. I will say this, though. Beyond the day-to-day -day things that tend to weigh on my mind, one of the things that get to me the most is how incredibly stupid everybody has become all at the same time. It's like the programming being given to everyone has so many people dolled down. Uh, just a quick example to give a side story here. Um, I was watching Stranger Things, and they always have to have some buffoon character in all of these shows, in all of these stories, and it's usually the best person in the entire series. It's almost like being a good person is just condemned and laughed at. Um, another thing I notice is the insane cult-like obsession with the myth of man-made global warming. This has been disproven by every, virtually every scientist not tied to the industry in some way. Not getting a check to come up with ridiculous studies that aren't based on anything but truncated data and pseudoscience. And yet people continue to fall for this ridiculous global warming hoax. Now listen to this nutcase. Drivers will be forced off the road in Ireland as the population packed into higher density cities under a long awaited climate plan, which will revolutionize people's lifestyle and behaviors 
according to local media. Nudge policies such as high tax hikes, huge tax hikes, <coughs> as well as bans and red tape outlined in the plan will pave the way for a vibrant Ireland of zero emissions by 2050. They are advertising and bragging about the fact that they're going to steal your money for taxes in Ireland for the sole purpose of making you move and taking your car. It's what they actually have committed to. There is a link here. It goes, oh, what's this link called? To an entire, the entire manifesto is what I'll call it. If someone had said that the climate change nutcases five or ten years ago were going to come to take your car and raise your taxes to make you leave your house, you would have called that person a conspiracy theory in a nutcase. Well, guess what? None of that is true because this story is true. And in order to avert a climate apocalypse, you know, from the man-made global warming, which isn't happening, the government plans to force people out of private cars because they are the biggest offenders of emissions. Now, whenever they say climate change, I'm just going to replace it with the more appropriate tooth fairy so that you can truly understand how ridiculous this is because man-made global warming is about as real as the tooth fairy. Launching the plan in Dublin, leader Leo Vac Valvadkar outlined his vision of an Ireland of high-density cities consisting of population whose lifestyles and behaviors have been totally transformed by carrot and stick policies outlined in the Tooth Fairy Plan. Now, he's even admitted the carrot and the stick, that when you move, you're, we'll make you move like a dumb animal following a carrot. That's even the analogy that he uses. And yet the dumb people will support this. Our approach will be to nudge people and businesses to change behavior and adapt new technologies through incentives, disincentives, regulations, and information. In other words, red tape to drive the price up of everything. There's some girl holding a sign. You can, um, you'll, you'll die of old age, but I'll die of climate change. That's like saying I'll die of the tooth fairy. That's really going on. That's really happening in Ireland. And even that isn't dumb enough to win the Dove Cap of the Month Award. We have two stories left, including our great runner-up here. Um, let me go off screen share. I've been on this forever. Sorry, guys. I completely forgot you there. You've been reading the article with me. You've been fine. Um, black Sunni professor says he feels happy seeing white homeless people begging for food. Now, if there's anything as fake as man-made climate change, it's white privilege. There is no white privilege. That's just a lie used by people seeking victimhood or more than likely people trying to find ways to divide people so that if the black man and the white man ever get together and realize that they're getting hosed equally, real change might happen and that's not what they want. So anyway, we got some more Easter Bunny stories here. I think the Easter Bunny is real, though. This story hopping along is not. A black professor of literature at SUNY Old Westbury wrote how he feels happy seeing white homeless people begging for food. Yeah, I'm sure the vets really appreciate that. White people begging us for food feels like justice, wrote Nicholas Powers in an article entitled Seeing Poor white people makes me happy. Now imagine if somebody wrote enjoying seeing poor black people makes me happy. Because, you know, I don't like hip-hop, so I'd like to see black people hungry. What kind of sadistic, nasty, rotten person would say something like that? But that's pretty much what is just said here by this man, and no one seems to be very outraged. It feels like the Afrofuturism after America fails. It feels like a black nationalist wet dream. It has the feels I rarely feel, a hunger for historical vengeance satisfied, so I rub my belly. What a rotten, Scrooge-like, evil person. And is it, is it a black dream to see America fail? I, that's what this bonehead just said. 
The piece was published by a website called Race Baiter, but has since been deleted. Yeah, I bet it has. What a piece of scum. Acknowledging that this isn't a good look, Powers nonetheless denounced Martin Luther King's message, yeah, because he was intelligent, of show compassion to those who spite you by asserting, go F another secretary, Martin. So now he's slandering Martin Luther King for being sexually impure when almost all of the music coming out of the mainstream for urban music pushes the exact lifestyle today. And hip hop is considered the savior of people living on the streets. See how the circular thinking of insanity works in many of these people on the far left. And I say far left because I don't think most leftists who are black would feel this way. I don't think most blacks feel this way. I'm not going to fall for the lie, but there are a number of them. Um, claiming that white people are descendants of murderers who killed our ancestors, Powers goes on to proclaim when a white person bangs, maybe a white woman breastfeeding or a young white boy whining like a broken flute, I feel better. Good. It's not just us. I feel happy. I feel like the scales of justice could shift. Powers went on to explain and says that he enjoys ignoring homeless white people begging for food, writing, I see in them the history of colonization, slavery and mass incarceration that makes their begging black people for money ironic, if not insulting. You wasted your whiteness. Why should we give it to you? There is no privilege to whiteness. That is a myth. That is a lie. I thought it was interesting. I read this meme the other day. It was uh, put out by Black Lives Matter. It's a bit dated. And one of the things that the meme said was <clears throat> uh, the many people in the Black Lives Matter movement would like to ask whites questions. Like, what's it like to be able to go into establishment and hear music that talks to your culture? I can't find... A club DJing music, unless it's country, which is terrible too, that isn't playing Beyonce, Jeremiah, J Drake crap. I, there, is, there isn't one. It completely dominates all music and has for the last 15 to 20 years. Uh, about 15 years. It's all over the place. They don't see. Perhaps unsurprisingly, Power's faulty faculty webpage lists his interest as feminism theory and Marxism. Yeah, because there's no fact. All right, guys, the Dunce Cap of the Month Award winner incoming. What's that? No, we don't want that. We want this. I want to thank you guys for listening. Um, make sure you hit share, make sure you hit subscribe, and I know what you're wondering. Who on earth won the Dunce Cap of the Month Award? Now, this, this is priceless. I want to go ahead and make sure I have the award called up so that you guys will get a chance to see this. Because when I tell you that we've entered a realm of stupidity, that even people who were leftists in the not-so-distant past would be floored <clears throat> by the stupidity that we are now seeing. <clears throat> How many of you remember Divine? The vulgar, but I thought hilarious, hilarious actor who was in Lust in the Dust. Um, he was crude. He was very offensive, but I thought he was funny. Um, there were jokes made. He was a large white guy that pretended to be a, uh, a big white woman, sometimes a Latino woman, depending on how his makeup was done. In it, I'm calling this word up too. In it, there are many jokes about a man posing as a woman and Throughout his career, it was something that was quite often laughed about, joked about. <clears throat> well, today, not only are they not making those jokes, but 
it is somehow considered trans prejudice if a man does not wish to sleep with another man who calls himself a woman. Really let that sink in for a minute. That, friends, is your dunce cap of the month award winner. Let me read you this story. I'm having trouble calling the cap up here. By the award that I made. Paul Joseph Watson, he, Paul PJ Dub finds us so many great dummies. A new study which found that only 3% of heterosexuals are willing to date a transgender person proves that society has a problem with trans prejudice and must be re-educated. In other words, a man who does not want to sleep with someone who has five limbs is now wrong for being a straight person. A straight person is not a straight person. In nutcase America, they are transphobic for not wanting to sleep with people who are the same sex. Now, how many of you have heard about the um, so-called toxic masculinity myth here? As we're talking about myths earlier, the toxic, toxic masculinity myth. The idea that people like David Lee Roth, for instance, would have toxic masculinity due to the way that he acts. Well, how is it then that we're not looking at toxic feminine, femininity or toxic homosexuality with these kinds of ridiculous stories coming to the forefront over and over again? In a study, and it's literally linked here to the Psychology Today article, which actually publishes Tripe was published in the Journal of Social and Personal Relationships, participants were asked to check which of the following they would consider as a potential dating partner. A cisgender woman, a cisgender man, a transgender woman, a transgender man, a person with non-binary gender identification. Look, I don't care if you're gay. I said earlier I'm a libertarian. However, if you choose to live in the delusion that there are more than one sex, if you choose to live in, and I said delusion, <clears throat> that there is more than one sex. If you want to believe that you are the opposite sex when you are not. If you think that hacking off your wee-wee makes you a woman, when in reality your DNA is still every bit male, you're just a mutilated man, then you are free to do so. However, you are certainly not free to force everyone else into doing so. And that is what we are seeing over and over and over again. So let me go ahead and read a bit more of this ridiculous article. The study found that only 3.1% of heterosexuals, that would be straight people, are willing to date a trans person, that would be a gay person, compared to 5%. 55% of people with queer or bisexual sexual orientation. So, if someone orients themselves as queer, I don't care. But then, if you are wanting to sleep with white people, or white people, I'm thinking of the last story, if you are wanting to sleep with straight people of the opposite sex, then you are by very definition bisexual. You are, at that point, say it with me, not gay. Yes. So the idea that gay people would be doing this is absolutely and totally false. I'm still trying to call this up if I seem like I'm drifting. I'm trying to get the award to call up so that you guys can have a look at it. And it's fighting me here at every, every turn. These types of responses questioned the legitimacy. Oh, this no, this is the greatest quote. This here is the uh, the ten dollar quote. According to author, now nah, hold on, 
According to author, and this is a doctor, no less, all for crying out loud, pop-ups and every other damn thing known to man. According to author Karen L. Blair, Ph.D., the results showed that many heterosexuals rejected dating trans people because they thought they had make-believe identities. They do have make-believe identities. And that is a form of trans prejudice. No, that is a form of reality. And if you can't handle reality, that is fine. But to imply that all of us have to join in on your fantasy does in fact earn you, without equivocation, the dunce cap of the month award. So here's the hat that I made. And again, I am having a bit of, I'm not going to try to look it up anymore. I'm just going to do the show, and when this is done, stay with me, and I'll try to call the award up. Um, look at this. Dunce. Um, that took a lot of time. See how? Um, so you're saying that you don't find Donald Trump attractive, but you're doing? So did Stormy. That's my little dude there. Um, now, the Karen L. Blair PhD glory hole of mystery, I wrote. It may be female. It may be male. But it is sure to be disgusting. There we go. I'm mailing this to her, by the way, to the good doctor. And then we have, I hear that you doink the ugly. See at my trailer at eight. And uh, there is my, my little trailer park dude that I drew. And I, I cut it too short, and it wouldn't fit. And I almost bought a new one. But then I realized that these people are stupider than most other people that you're over me. So what I did is I, I took a ring from a can. And what, what you now have here is you can, it's got a chin strap. And the chin strap, of course, will hold the dunce cap onto your head. So I'm going to go ahead and mail all of this to them along with the award and again all of that costs money so please make sure you do donate to the show it is mind-blowingly important and that's the show friends they run the dunce cap of the month now if you would give me a moment here i will definitely do my best to try to get the award called up because i would like to read that to everyone but for some reason and i'm not really sure what that reason is these do not want to call up and I'm not sure why. So I'm going to just, the show's over, but if you're going to hang with me while I try and get this done, I'll leave the camera run. If it needs a computer restart, then there's nothing I can do. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure what this problem is. Hmm, let me try searching it this way. Yes, and I can open that because I will look. Well, you know what, friends? I may just have to go ahead and read it to you another time because this, you know what, is just not going to cooperate. Let me see if I can do a force open. And you know what? That's what happens when you're live on the air. I'm not going to lie. What are you going to do? If I had help, which I used to have. If I had help on the show, I would uh, probably be able to reboot it from another computer, but you go to war with the army that you have, not the army that you wish you had. And with that, we will see if it will call up. That is mind-blowing. And nope, I can click this thing all day. It's just not going to cooperate. Basically, <clears throat> what it says is, I'll just read it to you next time. All right, friends, thank you so much for tuning in. Good night, God bless, and such is the nature of things that go live on.